He is 100% a villain. There is no denying it. There was no hiding it. And the craziest part of all was he was proud of it. I'm a villain. I think villains are smarter than heroes because they don't mind stabbing somebody in the back to get where they want to get. Never before had a survivor player gone all in to this extent as being the bad guy. This bully mentality of pushing everyone and everything down to do what you need to do was so polarizing. I plan on making it as miserable as possible, making it hell for everybody to get what I want. Not even talking, simply survivor, it can be argued Russell Hans is one of the most despicable individuals to ever appear on reality TV. You call me the puppet master. They can be my little puppets. They'll run when I tell them to run. They'll walk when I tell them to walk. When I'm finished with them, just throw them in the trash. Make sure to find somewhere comfy, grab some popcorn, sit down and relax, as this is gonna be a dive into the world of Russell Hance and why I would argue his survivor strategy is flawed. And not the game of Survivor itself, like he tried to explain to the community oh so long ago. I think, I think there is a flaw in the game. The goal of this documentary isn't to make fun of Russell for his pathetic whining on his YouTube channel, or to expose him for scamming a large number of people with fantasy football, or even to highlight his embarrassing attempt to attack Survivor players on Twitter like Survivor 44's very own Carolyn Weger. No, instead, the goal of this documentary is to examine the fast rise of Russell Hance up until his eventual downfall in Survivor, so you can come to your own conclusion about whether or not the title of Survivor Legend is justified or deserved. This is my last time playing this game. That's it. I have nothing else to prove to myself or to my family. Russell Hance would begin his Survivor journey with the 19th season Survivor Samoa on September 17th, 2009. And if you ask Russell himself, he would tell you his Survivor journey ended March 9th, 2011 with Survivor Redemption Island. However, Russell would play the world's greatest game one more time on August 1st, 2018 with Australian Survivor Season 3 Champions vs. Contenders. This would obviously end in embarrassing fashion getting voted out the very next day during episode 2 on August 2nd, 2018. Russell, the tribe has spoken. But we are getting way ahead of ourselves as we first need to talk about his rise in popularity before we can talk about his eventual downfall. Russell's legacy is highly disputed as his display of strategic prowess and ability to locate hidden immunity idols have enabled him to reach the final travel council in his first two seasons. However, interpersonal conduct rendered him virtually ineligible to win a game determined by social relationships. I really seriously believe that everybody on the jury is going to respect my gameplay. Do you think Russell Hance should be considered a survivor legend or someone that got lucky with being in the right place at the right time? It is without question that Survivor was slowly starting to lose the magic that made it special in May of 2000 with the very first season, Survivor Borneo. Survivor needed to find its spark again, something or someone to allow the viewers at home to spread word of mouth and get excited about the show every single week. A simple look at the average viewership across seasons can show that this leveled out around the time of the 19th season of Survivor. And with no surprise, this is due to Russell Hance. We had simply never seen anyone like this before. Sure, it can be argued that Survivor was still getting quality players like Ozzy, Amanda, and Sari, but none of this could compare to Russell Hance. As we dive into his specific seasons, you need to remember that he would play Survivor three times and for 88 days within June 11, 2009 and August 26, 2010. So my strategy is to be able to have a secret alliance with each one of these dumb girls. We Russell would step foot on the beaches of Samoa during the 19th season of Survivor and early on declare in confessional that he didn't come here to work, he came here to play. His very first season should be renamed Survivor Samoa The Russell Hant Show. Oh wait, that's already the name of my rival's YouTube channel. But I'm not joking, this was fully The Russell Hant Show from start to finish. Dominating as much screen time and confessionals as he possibly could, becoming the first person and only person in Survivor history to receive more than 100 confessionals in a single season. It was obvious this was the rise of Russell Hance. And when you contrast this with the fact that the winner of the season, Natalie White, would only receive 15 confessionals, the least amount for any winner in Survivor history, it's obvious why casual fans think he was robbed of a victory. Winner of Survivor Samoa, Natalie White. 
Known in the community as the Idol King, Russell became infamous for finding hidden immunity idols without the clue. Now in today's day and age, and in the new era of Survivor, that's just become the norm. But this was revolutionary at the time, and I would argue Russell broke the hidden immunity idol this season. This would open the floodgates of crazy idol plays that would eventually lead to the overabundance of advantages we see in Survivor seasons today. Russell Hans was one, doing things throughout the season that had never been seen before, like finding hidden immunity idols without clues. 2. Part of an amazing underdog story with the FOA FOA 4 being down in numbers 4-8 to eight at the merge and making it to the end of the game. 3. Controlling people out of fear with dumping out water, burning people's socks, and hiding the machete. 4. Creating what he called the dumb girls alliance with all the young girls on his tribe. 5. On top of that, many people tend to forget he created a fake sob story of being a fireman and having a German shepherd. All of these things were amazing to watch and helped Russell make it to the end of the game with potential to win the title of Soul Survivor. That's the big issue, Russell was never going to win Survivor Samoa. He played an amazing strategic game, revolutionizing the way the hidden immunity idol would be used, and made an alliance that would make it to the end of the game. However, his attitude with how he did it would rub the jury the wrong way. It's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. I always thought that was BS that losers said, you know? I've seen arguments that Russell was just too ahead of his time and would have won a modern season of Survivor. And honestly, that's a load of crap. Sure, the importance of strategic gameplay has increased with each passing season of Survivor. At the end of the day, you need to build social connections with the jury to win. All these things together make it seem impossible for Russell to make it to the end of the game in a future season of Survivor, as he would have way too big of a target on his back. Russell was going to be in an interesting spot moving into Survivor's 20th anniversary season, Heroes vs. Villains, as none of these returning favorites had any idea what kind of game Russell had just played with season 19. Things like JT writing a note to Russell, giving him his hidden immunity idol, or even Coach working with Russell early in the game would never work if Russell hadn't been so lucky. Don't worry, we are going to be diving into all of that, but first I need to remind you that just like how Russell Hans was lucky going into Heroes versus villains. I'm trying to get super lucky and gain more subscribers than him on YouTube. If you're unaware, I'm in a competition to gain more subscribers than him. So if you're enjoying this video or you just want to see the downfall of Russell Hans continue, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And as a bonus, when we hit 10,000 subscribers, I'll be making a dedicated video interviewing Russell Hans. Get ready for a hot take, but Russell gets ridiculously lucky with something that is completely out of his control with the timing of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. If the Villains tribe was aware of how Russell played just a season prior, then I would argue Tyson doesn't make the awkward mistake of voting himself out of the game and we have a completely different season of Survivor on our hands. Believe it or not, I'm a little nervous going in. I'm still in awe of who I'm here with. I mean, for God's sake, Boston Rob, yeah, poverty. I gotta get my mind straight and not let them get me too starstruck. I'm out here playing a game with them now. Obviously, the early parts of the season is the battle of Russell Hans versus Boston Raw. That would lead into a completely different season based on this theme. That season would be the nail in the coffin for Russell's downfall, and we'll talk about it soon. There are multiple times this season where things outside of Russell's control impact his performance, like Tyson voting the wrong way, JT giving the idol to Russell, Russell wasting a hidden immunity idol during the Amanda vote-off, and sure, we honestly need to give Russell a little bit of credit here as he famously once said he didn't play Survivor two times back to back. He played Survivor for one long season lasting a long 78 days and the mind and body can only handle so much. You know what? I didn't play twice. I played once. The issue is that Russell would openly treat people like absolute garbage after the merge and although he would end up making the final tribal council again and tell the jury he plays Survivor as hard as he can to make it to the end of the game, he misses the whole point that it's the jury that decides who wins the game in the end. And he becomes a complete hypocrite at the reunion show as he complains there's a flaw in the game leading into the war between Rob and Russell. Everybody here is familiar with Boston Rob and Russell. Russell. In back-to-back -back seasons, Russell masterminded two of the strongest alliances in Survivor history. Russell has played twice. He's been to the end twice. He has never won. This time, the magic in a bottle that was the way Russell Hans was playing Survivor was finally over. Almost none of the players on Survivor Redemption Island wanted to play with Russell after watching how he played in both Samoa and Heroes vs. Villains. 
audience. Although Russell would tell his tribe up front he's a changed man now, he would tell the audience instantly in confessional that is not true at all. And he even got a Keep Hope Alive tattoo as a shout out to his crazy idol play during season 19. Keep Hope Alive. The definition of a disappointing performance making it feel like Russell will never return to the same level of popularity after finding the idol clue and unable to find the actual hidden immunity idol as his tribe would throw an immunity challenge to have him voted off third this season. Russell, the tribe has spoken. However, this wouldn't be Russell's final Survivor performance as he would try one final time during Australian Survivor Season 3, only to have literally zero impact on the game. That's not to say Russell Hance hasn't tried to stay relevant in the reality TV universe as his nephew Brandon Hance would play Survivor twice and Russell would create the Russell Hance Show on YouTube to give his thoughts on the newest Survivor moments. If I can control how they feel, I can control how they think. One thing is certain, Survivor changed forever after Russell Hant stepped foot onto Survivor during its 19th season. So while Russell got insanely lucky that none of the players in Heroes vs. Villains saw him play his first season of Survivor, I would argue he should still be considered a Survivor legend, even though he will never win Survivor if he was to return for a future season.